According to research conducted by the Global Web Index, it indicates that 59% of the global population is actively engaged on social media. The average daily usage is approximately 2 hours and 31 minutes. Meanwhile, additional research conducted by the press wire indicates that more than two-thirds, 67% of small businesses use at least one social media tool to promote their business. The publication says that more than 25% of businesses used social media to drum up at least some business in 2022. Meanwhile, only 20% of their company's website and 18% of additional and traditional advertising dollars made an impact on their bottom line in 2022. Joe McCarthy has helped over 5,000 clients completely dominate their social media presence, helping them gain between 10,000 and a million followers while also multiplying their business revenue 10 times over. McCarthy evolved from selling farm goods on a small, sustainable farm in Virginia to scaling one of the most successful digital marketing agencies in the industry. He spent years growing his following, and now he shows others how to do the same. What's the secret to developing a message which resonates with your target consumer on social media? And how do you make sure that campaigns are sustainable, reliable, and most importantly, profitable by utilizing social media? Well, my friends, I'm glad you asked because this week, McCarthy Join me this week to have a conversation about social media and everything involved to be a successful social media entrepreneur and business owner. So without further delay, I'm Kevin McShan. Let's have this conversation. take a moment to welcome you uh, to the program, my friend, and I'm super excited to talk to you about amplifying your uh, social media presence this afternoon. Great uh, to see you, my friend, and thank you so very much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So, Joe, they tell me that you went from selling goods on a farm in Virginia to helping people... uh, uh, amplify their presence on uh, social media, my friend. So I'm wondering if you can tell me about the good work that you do and how you got to uh, where you are today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I, yeah, like you said, I grew up on a small farm in Virginia. So I help people, you know, well, I used to help people just sell their farm products, get out to more people. Um, and like what happened is I had a ton of like farm products, like chickens, eggs, stuff like that. And I was struggling to sell them. So, you know, I'd say at age 14, 15, I came across social media, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and I started using that to actually, you know, sell products on my farm. So I would sell, you know, through Instagram and Facebook. And I saw that it was immediately selling out. Um, and so obviously fast forward a few years, you know, the business was doing well for the farm. Um, I was growing a personal brand on Facebook and Instagram with the farm. And I decided to kind of move into 
doing more of like the entrepreneurship stuff, right? I was reading up on, you know, uh, success, you know, uh, books, whether it's like Grant Cardone, um, you know, Tony Robbins, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, that kind of stuff. So I really dove into that kind of um, entrepreneurship and self-help. Um, and I decided to put out content similar to that message, right? So I was posting more of my personal brand instead of the farm. So, you know, fast forward a couple of years, I started growing my own personal brand, getting out to more people. Um, and then obviously now I'm helping thousands of people build their personal brands as well and get out to, you know, many people on their end. Yeah, and I know, uh, Joe, that you help people uh, grow their social media following and you've worked with over uh, 5,000 clients. So I'm curious to ask you about how you really go about determining how to build a successful uh, social media campaign to really maximize uh, your social media presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can maximize your social media presence. Like for one, I would say, you know, choose a niche, like who you're going to help, whether that's, you know, entrepreneurs, fitness, relationships, choose one niche that you want to go in and go full into that, right? Instead of just diving into all kinds of different things. So that's the first thing is kind of choosing a niche, choose an avatar for who you want to help. Um, and then the second thing would kind of uh, be like, you know, put yourself in front of a camera, create more um, like engaging content. Uh, and I always tell people like, you're not going to be perfect. Like when you first, you know, put out a piece of content or you put out your first podcast or video, right. But as you continue building the reps, as you continue getting out to more people, it's going to help really, you know, solidify your confidence. So the second thing is just get started, right. Put out content consistently, get out to more people, um, you know, kind of brand yourself, create like a color theme. So those are some little tips that you can do just to get started and, you know, building like a social media presence. Yeah, I, I tell me when you look at uh, building a business and social media presence, tell me how uh, they can uh, use social media to be more creative, which ultimately will lead to more profit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so there's a, there's a few ways you can learn how to monetize on social media, right? So like, for one, you don't really want to be selling in the actual content, you want to provide as much value as you can in the content. Because if you're providing value, if you're able to like entice an audience, you know, they're going to engage, they're going to want to give you money or pay you anyways, right? So like what I say is, you know, don't sell directly in the content, instead, provide as much value as you can. Because by you, helping people being a service, you're going to just naturally bring in clients, right? So like what I would do is one, put out good content that's helping people, you know, that's going to help you monetize and, and create a good personal brand anyways. But then on top of that, you know, you can do things like coming out with courses, coaching, like once you kind of solidify yourself in this space, you know, whether that's finance, relationships, fitness, or entrepreneurship, um, what you can start doing is coming out with more paid offerings. So you could create like a course for a few hundred bucks. You could create coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, group coaching. So those are like a couple little tips that I would do just to kind of get started on monetizing and actually making money, you know, through social media. Yeah, absolutely. And Joe, tell me, how do you think people can avoid being um, saturated on uh, social media? And do you believe there's uh, such a thing as uh, social media burnout, my friend? Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I definitely, yeah, to answer the second question, I definitely think there is such thing as social media burnout. Like, I've definitely felt it. And I think the way to avoid, you know, burnout is not putting out so much content. Like a lot, it's kind of contradictory to what a lot of people say. They say post once a day or twice a day or three times a day, right? And that can get very overwhelming. So what I say is, you know, don't overwhelm yourself with putting out content. Instead, focus on the quality, right? I'd rather see, you know, one piece or two pieces of content a week from you that are really high quality and really good information than, you know, 10 pieces of content that are, you know, kind of mediocre. And plus, it takes like a lot more time to create, you know, a piece of content a day or twice a day. So usually you get burnout if you spend too much time, you know, creating this content. And the second thing is if you're not passionate about it, right? Just like you said, you know, if you love what you do, you're never going to work a day in your life, right? It's kind of the same with social media, right? If you actually put out content that you like, if you put out content that you vibe with, 
Um, and that it truly like kind of like lights a fire in you, right? You don't even really see it as a chore. You don't see it as work. So if you really are passionate about what you're putting out, usually you don't burn out quite as fast. But if you put out stuff that isn't really aligned with what you're supposed to be doing or, you know, what you're really passionate about, then that's kind of where you break off and create this sense of burnout, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just circling back to uh, my first question in that series, how do you uh, avoid becoming uh, saturated in a social yeah. media market? Yeah, yeah. With saturation, I mean, like with Instagram specifically, right? So I'm primarily on Instagram. Um, it's already very, very saturated. So kind of a couple ways to not be saturated and to kind of stand out is choose like a very specific um, niche. So like for me, like I have a very specific niche that I'm helping out really post all kinds of different content. I help, you know, 18 to 25 year old male entrepreneurs, right, with business. So you kind of want to choose a niche. And then a couple of small things you can do actually is create like a color theme, you know, maybe come out with a little bit of branding, add your, you know, logo, add, you know, your signature, like you'll see behind me, like I have my signature actually um, on my wall, and I have that in all of my content. So ways that you can kind of stand out from the rest, stand out from the crowd is create like a color theme. So maybe make like a little add like a little bit of color in all of your posts that are consistent. You'll see with my brain, it's red. So I always have a little piece of red in all my content. Um, and the second thing is just putting in like logos, you know, signatures, add your username. So that way you stand out from everybody else versus just putting out a piece of content, and not editing it, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And Joe, just before I ask you about your agency, I'm also curious to ask you about creating your or staying in your lane in social media when it comes to a target audience. How do you make sure that you don't overreach when you're uh, mm. on social media and really creating a target audience? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, honestly, usually your audience will tell you, right? Like they'll kind of explain like, hey, you know, I don't really vibe with this type of content or they'll even show you in the in the metrics, right? If you put out a ton of content on relationships and you're getting lots of engagement, lots of likes and views, and then all of a sudden you put out a piece of content and fitness, they're going to kind of be, you know, weirded out. They're like, hey, you know, you're this is kind of like your lane. And they might even, you know, kind of show you by not giving you a lot of likes or not giving you, you know, a lot of views or comments. Um, so a lot of times you'll be able to see in the metrics if you've crossed the lane or not, because you won't get as much reach or, or as much organic engagement as you would if you were to just post, you know, a specific niche. So usually you can actually see just in the metrics if, you know, you're in your lane or if you're more out of your lane, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Joe, I know you spent years growing your own personal uh, following. I know that you're primarily on Instagram with over 350,000 uh, followers. So tell me how your personal journey affects the work you do today and about uh, a little bit about the agency that you help run in the sales department, buddy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, like, as far as, like, how it's impacted what I do today, I, I, I can relate a lot with a lot of younger entrepreneurs. I can relate with people trying to grow their brands and grow their pages, right? Because I was once in their shoes. So, like, as I was scaling up, like, fat, you know, if you go back three or four years, when I was trying to build my personal brand with my content, I was having a very hard time with reaching people. I was having a hard time building a following, getting the engagement out. Um, to more people, gain the content to more people. Um, so I can kind of relate to people. Like if they're trying to build their followers or they're trying to get out to more people, um, I can completely relate to that. So that's the main thing. Um, and kind of what we do at our agency, right, is we help people build their actual um, metrics. So we'll get them a lot more followers, a lot more you know, engagement, likes, views, comments. We can get press articles about you, which means that we can feature you on you know, publications. So if people Google your name, they're able to see all these articles about you. So we do all kinds of things in that regard. We help you actually blow up the social media presence. Um, because obviously, like you, for instance, maybe you have great podcasts, you have a great brand, and you're just not able to reach a lot of people. Um, that's where we would come in, we would help you get 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 followers, 
Um, basically by running ads, running what's called a mass DM will actually send your page to thousands of people, you know, throughout the U S and that will build up your followers, you know, organically, slowly. Um, and like I said, we could get you 10,000, 50,000, hundred thousand followers. So that's essentially like in a nutshell, what we help people do, um, at my agency. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask you about, uh, uh, getting like paid, uh, advertising dollars and paying an agency versus growing uh, social media uh, organically. So I'm wondering uh, why you fall in the debate when it comes to paid versus organic uh, sort of, of social media growth. Yeah, 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 great question. So honestly, man, like the, the annoying thing with social media these days is there's so many people on it that it's almost impossible to grow it to a high scale organically, right? Just if you don't invest at all, you know, it could take you years and years and years just to hit 5,000 or 10,000 followers. So usually with me, um, especially for my company, we're a lot more paid. So I would probably, you know, want you, I, I would suggest going down the route of doing a little bit paid. If you look at any of the biggest successful companies, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, um, brands, pretty much all of the biggest um, companies are out that are out there. They're investing tens of thousands of dollars into their branding, into their growth, into their marketing. So, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you know, if you want to reach a max amount of people and you want to really get out to people and make an impact, usually the only way to do that is by having some kind of paid marketing, whether that's, you know, ad dollars or, you know, mass DMs, campaigns, giveaways, you know, partnerships, promotions, stuff like that. Um, so I would definitely suggest going down the route of paid, especially down the line, because that's going to help to catapult you and build up a brand much faster. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Joe, I know you've been uh, featured in several publications yourself, like Men's Journal, IBC, uh, influence at, at, at MSN. So I'm curious how you think you've used your sort of increased notoriety to pay it forward and make a difference. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So obviously, at the end of the day, right, the more people you can get in front of, the more people you can help, right? Like with Grant Cardone, he says, like, if if you don't know me, you know, I can't help you. If, if you know, you don't know me, you can't buy from me, right? So if you want to get more leads, if you want to make a bigger impact, if you want to reach more people, um, you have to get out there. So my two avenues, right, are Instagram and then PR, which is, you know, press releases. So for some of those publications, right, maybe, you know, it's not really helping people see me on Instagram. It's going to help me get out there and get known on Google. Because a lot of times the two things people are going to do is they're going to go to Google to look stuff up or they're going to go to Instagram to look stuff up, right? So if I can have a huge presence on Instagram to where I can reach people with my content, you know, end up on the explore page. And then also if they're looking me up, I have a, you know, massive personal brand. They're going to trust me more. They're going to want to work with me more. Um, and then same with, you know, the press articles, that's going to drive people to my website, drive people to my page where I have, you know, over 200, 300 posts up there that are helping people. So by me getting out these press articles, I'm able to drive people and funnel people to my social media to book calls with me. And that's where I can make an impact, whether it's free, whether I just, you know, go on a consulting call and give them value, you know, or if it's free through my content that they're looking at and getting value from, or if it's paid and they end up buying a service and I blow up their social media account and get them more growth, more clients for their business. Um, that's essentially what I'm doing with the press articles is using it to gain more eyeballs, get more traffic, to drive them to my Instagram or my social media so that I can help them in some way, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, Joe, that you're on a personal mission to uh, bring knowledge and in information and branding, branding the transform over one million personal brands. So tell me how the mission is going and uh, what what your criteria is to reach the milestone, my friend? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Um, it's hard to quantify, right? Because it's like at the end of the day, I don't know how many people I've helped. 
Um, I'm just looking at the overall impact of my personal brand on Instagram, how many people are looking at my articles or, you know, looking me up. Um, so I'd say like I've already helped, you know, a couple hundred thousand people just through my content alone. Um, and we've worked with, like I said, you know, 7,000 and 8,000 clients so far. So it's been a really good journey so far. And I'm only 20, right? So like I have a long ways ahead uh, to get there. Um, but I do think like by age 25, 27, or maybe even 30, you know, I'll be able to easily help a million people. But yeah, I'm super excited for it. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck on that journey, Bonnie. And I, I want to know sort of your, as a younger millennial, your sort of opinion on the, the advancement and the, the evolve, uh, involvement of social media and how it's really evolve to reach more people and to get more people noticed yeah yeah 100 percent. so what i've actually noticed is that the past like five to ten years especially you know it used to be that social media instagram they were more so like just a community app they were for kids you know they were just to kind of you know make connections and stuff like that and kind of post your life but these days like you're seeing big business owners on social media you're seeing podcasters on social media you're seeing companies on social media so i feel like it's evolved from having you know just more of like a community aspect and just like kind of you know connecting to being like a business opportunity right because i know plenty of people they get 90 80 percent of their business just through instagram just through social media so a lot of people are starting to use it and monetize it and really capitalize on it to, you know, not just make a bigger impact, but also bring in business. Um, so like I said, where before maybe it was just like a photo sharing app and you just share like a you know picture of your food. Now it's like you can get business from it. You can get coaching clients from it, more listeners for your podcast from it. So it's really transformed into like this business tool that people are using to, you know, like I said, bring in business and and make a bigger impact at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. So, Joe, I don't know how much uh, research you did on myself personally, but I was born with what's called uh, a spastic quadriplegia cerebral palsy. It simply means that I don't have enough oxygen to walk normally. And I went to school, buddy, to originally become a, a sports reporter because I told myself I, I couldn't play sports. I wanted to uh, cover it. But for me, for from a personal and professional perspective, it's really helped me, and I'm talking about social media, yeah. really, really gain more, more of a notoriety or presence. So talk to me how you think people can um, use social media to become more inclusive and how much of an effective tool do you think it is for folks like uh, with disabilities to get noticed by it? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I know, I know, plenty of people like in your same scenario, right? Like maybe they want to do X, Y, or Z, and you know they can't. But I think for you guys, like if you were to put out like a piece of content on social media, you know everybody can do that, right? And like the cool thing is, is like with you guys, you can share your story. You know, you can impact and inspire people a lot easier. Um, so I think like you know, especially if you guys are in um, a scenario where you know, let's say if, if you're like in a wheelchair, right, like maybe you can't play a sport or you can't do X, Y, or Z. Um, if you start to kind of put your energy somewhere else where you're more gifted, like social media growth, podcasting, like you guys can make an impact in your own way. And social media makes it so much more accessible for everybody to, you know, make a huge impact. Like I know some massive people that, you know, may have disabilities, but they're making a huge impact in, you know, the world of personal branding, self-growth, you know, if you have a message that you can share through your voice, whether it's speaking or podcasting, um, social media is like the main avenue to get out to, you know, millions of people. Yeah, absolutely. And Joe, what do you forecast is the future of social media? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say, so I'm sure you've heard of like the metaverse and like these, you know, AI technologies, right? Um, personally, I think like a lot of stuff is going to move into this metaverse. Like I'm not a huge fan of it, but I think like a lot of it will become a lot more digital. So like when, you know, you may have meetings in person, do, you know, business deals in person, real estate in person, that stuff is actually starting to move into this almost virtual reality where you can invest in real estate virtually, you can buy 
you know, advertisements, you can buy like road signs virtually, you know, you can buy property virtually, you can have meetings virtually. So I think social media is going to almost morph into this um, aspect of like living life, almost like in a virtual reality. So like I said, like if you have like a business meeting in person, let's say six years down the line, you're probably going to have that meeting at your house, but it might be almost like a virtual reality type thing. So I think that's like the main thing. Um, I think Instagram specifically will be here for a while. I think YouTube is a long form platform. So that will be here for a while. Uh, other platforms like TikTok, it's kind of hard to tell because it's like there's people who are trying to actually get it banned right now in the US. Um, so like that's going to go like Senate or whatever, and, and we'll see like what happens there. But um, you know, as far as Instagram and, uh, YouTube, I think those will be here for a while. It might morph into more of, like I said, a, a metaverse type reality. But other than that, I think, um, the basis of social media and connecting, making an impact, you know, bringing in income, I think it's going to stay generally the same. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Joe, one, one of the things about, uh, social media that's getting more attention is the misinformation that's in, uh, the social media around. So how do you think people can be cautious when it comes to really uh, ciphering out the misinformation that they're saturated with on social media? Mm, that's a great question. So like, I would say it comes down to who you're following. Because like a lot of times people don't realize, especially with Facebook and Instagram, like you're almost in your own little echo chamber of information. So a lot of times you know, let's say you're on the left or the right, or like you believe in this or that, um, Instagram and Facebook, they're going to feed you kind of like what you want to see. They're going to show you stuff that you want to see. They're not going to show you the other side, right? So like you kind of have to be cautious with who you're following, um, maybe even mix in like a couple different people who you don't necessarily agree with just so you can get the other you know side. Because a lot of times if you're only one sided on a scenario or like a you know, a debate, you're not going to get the other side. So you may get a lot of misinformation over here, right? So you want to kind of mix in with who you're following, because who you're following is going to basically be what your content, what your feed is going to be about on social media. So especially when you're, you know, going and following people, you want to make sure that it's a good variety, a good mix of different types of people. Like I have, you know, follow, I have people that I follow that I may not agree with, but I'll follow them just to get the other side. And I might follow people that I do agree with just so I can get, you know, kind of two sides of the coin, if that makes sense. A balanced perspective, right? Right, exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, Joe, there's a, there's a sign in my office and there's a motto that I live by that life is a constant game of networking. And I, I certainly use uh, social media to network sites like LinkedIn or, uh, you know, podcast matching sites like we met on mm -hmm. Matchmaker or Podmatch, for example. So tell me about your philosophy when it comes to networking efforts, so that it is as it relates uh, to social media, buddy. Yeah, great question. So, I mean, as far as networking goes, I'm huge into networking. I think with social media specifically, it's a very big networking tool. Like I reach out to people every single day, you know, to network. Um, but usually when you reach out or you know, whether it's in person and you meet them or it's on social media and you meet them, you want to make sure that you're not taking more than you're giving. Like I think a lot of times people might network because they want to secretly get something out of them or they want to secretly get business from them, right? So like I think if you go into it more of service, like kind of going back to, you know, what I said in the beginning of the podcast, like if you end up, you know, going into networking with service, like, hey, how can I help you? Like, is there anything I can do for you? Instead of kind of taking and asking, um, that usually one will build a much better and deeper relationship. Um, and they're open to being like, you know, friends with you. Uh, and then number two, it could potentially get business down the line, just almost indirectly. So I always try to approach it as like, you know, how can I help you, you know, the most? And I don't really look to get something out of it, basically. Yeah, and you're telling me when you're not helping people uh, with their social media campaigns and growing their social media presence, buddy, how do you find your inner center personally? What do you like to do, bud? That's a good question. 
Um, so I've gotten big into like fitness, you know, like I wasn't huge into fitness like a few years ago, but like recently I've done, you know, like I ride my bike around town, go to the gym six days a week. So I do like to kind of get moving. I like to, you know, move my body, um, you know, do a little bit of light weight lifting, stuff like that. Um, other than that, there's like small hobbies, like day trading, <laughs> like I, it's kind of risky, but I like to day trade just kind of for fun, see how it goes. Um, cause I am a big risk taker. I'm obviously like calculated risk. You don't want to just go crazy, but it's just kind of like a fun little hobby that I do, you know, here and there. But yeah, other than that, I would say fitness is kind of one of the biggest things I've gotten into. And the cool thing with that is it kind of feeds into business, right? Cause it's like, if you're healthy, you know, if you're fit, you feel better, you have more energy, you show up better on calls, you close more deals. Um, so like fitness helps in like all kinds of different areas, you know, whether it's, you know, life relationships, business. Um, so like, that's a hobby that's also productive in pretty much every area, other, other area of my life as well. So that's what I usually do in my downtime if I'm not working or on calls and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And Joe, tell me if you were given a hall pass for a day, buddy, what would you engage in as a guilty pleasure if I gave you a hall pass, buddy? Huh, that is a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I have to think about that. Honestly, like, I think what I'd probably want to do is I'm very curious with, like, with what goes on, like, in the government, right, in the White House, just to kind of see, like, what they do, you know, kind of see, like, behind the scenes. Like, there's obviously so many conspiracy theories out there of, like, you know, what happens and stuff like that. But I think, like, if I could pretty much do anything, if I had a hall pass, I'd love to go in and go to, like, the White House, see what happens there, you know, go into, like, some of the different areas in D.C. and just kind of, like, get the inside scoop of, you know, how everything works because obviously that's, like, one of the big, like, secrets, I guess you could say. Um, so I think that would be, like, a super interesting thing to do for, like, a day. <laughs> yeah, well, it's always good to be caught up on civics, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And Joe, my final question for you today has to do with your own personal and professional legacy and how you want that to be defined. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously from some of those articles that you read and like with my mission, like I want to help at least a million people. I think by the end of my life, probably 10 million people, you know, with their personal brands, I want to help them, you know, do what I've been able to do with my brand, you know, get out to more people, help, you know, others in need. Um, Because I think a lot of people like they have great services, they have great products, and they have like good stuff to offer. They just don't know how to get it out to more people, right? They don't know how to reach a max amount of people. So I want to be the guy to come in and help them, you know, make an impact in their lives. Because if I can help, you know, if I can help 2,500 people that also help 2,500 people, that's a million, right? So like, if you can always build this compound effect, where, you know, I help people also help people, then that just builds, you know, it just builds upon itself, right? So like, I think ultimately, I want to be known as one of the best marketers and best, you know, brand builders, who's helped the most people out of, um, you know, any other, uh, you know, influencer out there, any other entrepreneur out there. Um, cause I am super passionate about like personal branding, helping other people build their brands. So at the end of the day, like I said, I just want to help at least like 10 million people just build their brands and, and help impact the other people in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, Joe, tell me if people want to get connected with you personally or your agency, buddy, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, yeah. So uh, like I said, Instagram is definitely the main platform that I'm on. So at Real Joe McCarthy uh, is where you can find me on Instagram. You'll also see me there on Facebook, Twitter, you know, YouTube. I'm all, I'm on all the social media platforms, but Instagram uh, is probably the best place to find me. And it's just at Real Joe McCarthy. Fantastic. Well, Joe, I want to thank you for your work in the space of social media and helping other people uh, grow and amplify their brand through the medium, buddy. You work in the space and top on my behalf this afternoon is most appreciated. And I want to thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's been awesome. I love the questions.